It's the weekly 30-30 trading boost on the ASX. We're reviewing the 30 best momentum companies over the last quarter, and also the companies that have had the best improvement in the last week. Gary Glover has been through both lists to find the best trading shares, opportunities, and setups to discuss this morning. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Chris. I'm good. So uh, you've got the list. You've been through them. The top 30 momentum and the top 30 launch pad. When you're looking at this and the overall market that's happening, is there anything that's coming out to you that's uh, popping front of mind for you from a trading perspective? Uh, there's a few, look, a few gold on the weekly list. This, this I thought was interesting. Um, like, a lot of, like a lot of the hot ones are sort of smaller ones, Chris. So that definitely in that sort of mining sector, there's like a lot of these sort of smaller, even some of the lithium names that are sort of um, probably tinier companies get catching a light. And going for these amazing runs there, so um, yeah, it's probably and, and they're kind of almost drilling driven as well, which is yeah, you know, pretty tricky to trade. So yeah, sort of yeah, yeah sort of drilling more holes, finding more stuff, and then the thing goes up. So it's uh, yeah, there's a, there's a few outside of that, but definitely a lot of that. So it does make it a little tricky to trade those, but um, Still, some fair lessons in, in these things as well. I noticed a few stocks that we've highlighted the last couple of weeks have continued to keep running. So, um, as we've often noted here, the leaders continue to keep leading, you know. Um, and if they're not sort of showing signs of weakness, I know a couple of questions, a couple of people had some questions regarding a couple of stocks there about, you know, the stocks are pulling back um, without volume, you know, saying that's negative. But, you know, well, to me, if they're, if they're pulling back and no one's selling them, and the, the volume is pretty light. That's that's telling me sort of something as well. So that should be so. We should be keeping an eye on those ones. You know, if they're pulling back and there's plenty of selling going on, the volume's pretty heavy. Then that yeah you know, tells you a clear sign as well. So if it's heavy, you know, there's a lot of people looking for the exit. But if it's not, then it's possibly like you've got on the screen there, G H Y, where that kind of pulled back in early second week of November. There wasn't much relative volume, was there? Yeah, exactly. So that's exactly the right chart. So you got four four big chunky weeks there, four big chunky days of going up really heavily, pull back three or four days and very, very minimal selling. It bounces again, goes down to two days, still no selling. So that's the, that's what we're sort of that's what we want to be looking for. So the stocks that have the big jump, big volume, when they pull back on light volume. That's you know, can't put it any can't put it any simpler than that. So um yeah. Um, it's funny. I sort of, I, I I read something this week, Chris, which sort of got in my head, stuck in my head the whole week. I couldn't get it out. It was fifty uh, percent of our memories are false. <laughs> and I, and I thought that can't be true. You know, like, but you know, the way you remember something in the past is is fifty percent of us, fifty uh, percent of that, you know, of, the, of our memories aren't, aren't true. I thought, you know, so I, I did a bit of looking into this and. Supposedly 30% of our memories are totally like made up. So we hear a good story or we dream a good story or you know, somehow we get this fake memory in our heads and it stays there and that that's actually not totally false, 100% not true whatsoever and that's our memory. Um, I think something like, I looked at this varying stats there, but around about 53% of our memories um, are false uh, or at least embellished. Which kind of makes sense because obviously we are the fish is bigger or that we scored that many goals or scored as many points or you know yeah, we tend to sort of make it better than it really was. Um, so I get some of that, but surprised me sort of um, you know the behavioural finance sort of the uh, Daniel Cannon sort of style there because you know, kind of made me sort of thinking about you know as as a trader here we sort of see things and think, oh, okay that's we've seen that before it's going to do this but I've got a question there because we you know. What one and two of those thoughts are true, so we've got to we've got to sort of um, question our sort of our memories as human beings there because a, a lot of the times it's such false. There. I mean, it's it's a whole confirmation bias. We are looking for information which which suits our our view, so we only sort of grab things that support our view. We 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 deny. We we overlook all the evidence contrary to us. I mean. Like just look at the halo. I love the halo effect too. Two two journos. Uh, one's good looking. One's good. One's charismatic. The other one's not so good looking. Less charismatic. Two different opinions there. We are going to believe the best looking, charismatic one, ninety nine times out of a hundred, 
even though the other journal might be smarter. It's the, you know, this thing called a halo effect. We just we believe a better looking uh, person. That's, that, that's human nature. That's, these are things about behavioral finance. It's quite quite amazing, actually, the whole psychology of trading and stuff there. So look, I was thinking about this quite, quite a bit over the week, and I think it's like joining a gym. So trading is probably the clock. Probably the closest thing to trading is joining a gym because you can just walk into a gym tomorrow, pay your fee, and just start turning up unassisted and start working out. So without any training or without any assistance, you're probably not going to hurting yourself, blow yourself up, um, probably do all the wrong things, not really get any benefit because you haven't really sort of studied it. But okay, so you're saying go and follow a few influencers, you go and follow a few professionals, you do a bit of reading. Uh, you might even find a mentor or a trainer, and now you start doing the right things and getting some benefits there. So similar sort of to trading, we can go and find a mentor. We can go and find out how someone's made it in the past and stuff, maybe try to mimic some of their things. Then, obviously, you know, going into the gym, if you really kind of have that next level, it's when you normally sort of put together a process, a strategy, a discipline, and a program that you're going to follow. That's when you start to get the best benefits from the gym. Um and your best results. And it's the same as sort of trading as well. You, you know, there's a reason why we put the process in place is to get those sort of benefits there. Eventually, you're able to refine your process, probably do less, slightly less work than you've done maybe in the younger years because you've sort of worked, you've worked out what, you know, almost minimalist sort of view. Like, what, what am I going to do every day to make it work? So how many charts do I got to look at? Uh, what work do I have to do? How many reps do I have to do? How many days at the gym? You know, instead of going, say, five days of the gym, I'm now going three. Instead of spending an hour and a half there, I'm there 60 minutes, but I'm, I'm doing the right sequence of setups. I'm doing the right, um, doing my sets, doing my process. I've got my, you know, doing arms, legs, you know, different days there back to back. So you've finally worked out the whole process there to get the maximum amount of benefit, least amount of work there. And that's, that's what traders do as well. And eventually, obviously, what happens when we stop Go to the gym, Chris. <laughs> oh, we all know what that looks like. We all like, yeah. We lose form. We lose form, and basically, we you know we lose lose our sort of strength. Um, you know, so it's the same as trading here. If we're not sort of doing the reps, we don't continue to keep doing the reps. So we can do less work than maybe did at the start. Um, and instead of reading every single book out there, we're just reading the key books, and we're just reading the sort of maybe we've got our process. We're just reading our process down as well. So. You definitely simplify it there, but still got to keep doing the reps, still got to keep doing the work. Um, but over time, you can refine that, make it, you know, um, you know, not, not so much minimalist sort of view there, but just working out, you know, there's a certain amount of, you know, we're going to have to do this work every day, sort of every week to get the high results that I, that I want to get there. So I don't know, it kind of, kind of made me sort of think about Jim, there's sort of, it's a real, uh, what I sort of trading in the zone sort of talks about, you know, the trading being a, a great game and stuff there to come into, but there's a reason why you need that discipline and the process and strategy there because human nature takes us places, you know. Um, you know it's, it's just, I think the gym is a really good analogy there. I think it's just sort of very, very similar there. It's sort of, because, um, yeah, if you're at the gym there, you, you might be there for like six or nine months, and you go, oh, I'm really feeling it. You might be feeling good, but you're not seeing, you know, like my, my, my guns aren't, you know, buffed, you know, not feeling, you know, strong as I thought I would. And you might sort of give up because you're not sort of, you're seeing some benefit, but not, well, not the big benefit you wanted to, you know. So, but at some point, if you, if you stay with it for a couple of years, you see that benefit sort of later on, and then you'll, you know, your whole core is pretty strong. And then you just sort of feel stronger the whole period there. It's, it's hard to lose that once you get to a certain level, as long as you're maintaining it. At a certain a certain level there, so I don't know. Kind of made. I think there's some good similarities there. So um, um, just something to think about for the day. And that uh, GHY obviously that has kicked on again. So pretty some pretty decent sort of volume there. So um, but it does typify that if we see these um, you know, bull out of the gate, big moves up really quickly, um, big volume and pull back on no volume. That those are the ones we want to keep an eye on there. So I noticed FL1 actually is, um, so even recently here, Chris, we had this little, this flag in here. So a bit messy in there. Obviously jumped up here quite a bit. Had another day, a bit, bit of day of selling here. So we often have, have that one day of selling. Bit of a recovery here. 
But then look at the next day here. That's, that's a pretty wide range, but the volumes all of a sudden dropped off here again. Volumes dropped off here again as well. So it's all of a sudden the selling dries up here and the price action just tightens up here on no volume as well. So this thing's tight. So I, I was watching this the other day. I thought, well, this thing looks like it's a little high type flag here. Mm -hmm. um, this could go again here. So if you're going to trade that, it's often hard to trade this small. So I was looking at, you know, what you probably want to do is actually drill into maybe like something like a half alley and then maybe go back to your sort of your setups here. So we, oh, we know we got a little bit of consolidation. Yeah, waiting for a little, we'll get a little BCP in here. So pulling back, pulling back, tightening up here. So we're basically waiting for a little B wave break out of our consolidation there. So once we sort of break high there, that's when we want to sort of go with the move there. So it's probably one way to trade some of those stocks that are a little harder to trade. You probably do need to have the ability to go into your sort of, you know, uh, smaller time frames there. But just, you know, you just, you do need, because they're tricky to trade, I was just talking about, you know, some of the Calamaggy sort of stuff there, is that he's got a sort of um, like a 70% failure rate. So that's pretty high. But he's trying to trade the highest momentum stocks here. So seven times out of 10, he's getting stopped out pretty tight, small losses there. But then, the thirty percent that he captures, they, they can be pretty big. So it might be one, you know, one or two moves a month there, which really paid for the whole year. So that's what he's trying to he's trying to do there. But the reason why he keeps it tight is he probably drills into the shorter time frames there and makes sure we don't sort of go by a certain level there. So that's sort of one avenue there for looking at some of these sort of um, high momentum sort of stocks as well. Um, what have we got there? WML. Number six on the list there. Oh, that right. um, it's a pretty big volume here. That's probably a little small, but when I see big volume like that, that tells me to sort of keep an eye on this. So we've jumped out of the gate here. So now we're looking for a little, some sort of consolidation. We've got a little flag here, but should should be on our list to um, keep an eye on there. Um, TCG Gold. Okay, so. Going to Gold. How the gold stock is, so yeah, a few little gaps in there, probably a little small, hard to trade these ones there, but just interesting now we got a bit of a uh, bit of movement. Gold, 4DX is actually one that we spoke about last week. Now, I, I reference this as, I think actually might have been this day here, Chris, actually we're talking about it. Um, and uh, yeah, so basically sort of did basically gap up what I what I refer to as game changer sort of news, so big big news for the stock there. Um, stock obviously ran up, has come back here, but it sort of held that low in place here now. So now it's sort of building here. I noticed it sort of came off the other day. There wasn't too much volume in there. I was, I was actually hoping this was going to do a little ABC and go slightly below this one here, but stop, hold hold the low in place and then go from there. But it has gapped up here, but this still looks pretty firm to me. It's pretty. Pretty sort of game changing uh, news for the for the company, um, and and showing some bit of strength there. So, um, I would definitely be keeping an eye on this. I'd just be again just drill into my half alleys, look for you know, just come back here congested here, looking for a little maybe a little B wave break here. Just you know, just going to sort of drill into maybe the shorter time frames here for some of these sort of stocks. That are, um, yeah, but we we must have the sort of stops and places. There's, there's a reason why Carl Aggie takes that many losses there because they can break down these stocks as well. But if you are trying to capture the big moves, um, then you know, these are the sort of stocks that have, when they've got a big jump, you know, either they have a big chunky sort of a volume for three or four days or the big sort of um, gap up and move there. But that, that looks pretty good. Um, PIL is a bit of a small one there. Um, look, probably too tiny for me. Just a bit of chunky volume in here. Keep an eye on there. Um, probably a bit hard. DNR was actually one that I was sort of watching there for a bit of another consolidation. So, um, pretty, you know, impulsive there, corrective, and then impulsive up here. So pretty good volume. Again, is that pulled back on pretty low volume there? So this is what Calamaggy looks for. He looks for the first bounce, then a pullback, and then again, you see no selling, and then basically breaking through that that little B way break there. So he'd be sort of waiting for it to break back above that 12 and a half cent there. Um, 
and then you know we're obviously under 18 here but this this thing through here is still pretty light through here Chris so not showing too many signs of uh selling off here just yet so just got to watch that there I've seen a couple break down here from this setup this last week so don't think they they're all going to go up here because they don't um but we, we are looking for that sort of um, consolidation there VEE um nice VCP in here Chris little uh pull back in here uh, some AK volume pushed up here and then the whole thing sort of dried up here starting to see a bit of volume a few volume bars here down near the low here um, and it has has kicked on here so nice sort of VCP breakthrough here as well even that though it's a to cut and handle as well yeah yeah no yeah definitely they've been probably probably a little little deep in the range but yeah but yeah maybe a little handle in here but um but yeah just um yeah, pretty interesting one. I did, did, did sort of see this one there. Just a little, little tricky to trade that one. The key there with those sort of ones that others others liquid is to is to um is just to trade them a bit smaller. Um, wouldn't say don't trade them there, but they're just um, just trade a bit smaller. New I see number twenty two. Um, I've just put on my list here just to watch this one here, just because we've had a even though it's a sort of small. There has been a bit of a chunky volume sort of through here. Um, that looked a little exhaustive there when it came through, but it hasn't hasn't sort of stopped the rally here. So it's actually sort of gone up here. So it might just be worth watching this for a little a little hand of some sort there. But it's a lot of that, consecutive green bars on the volume, isn't it? Just day after day edging up. Yeah, yeah. And it's sort of on the I guess if you look at the weekly as well, sort of got a bit of a squaring. You know, it's had a fairly decent pattern here now. It's now sort of Starting to break up out of this sort of little, you know, this tightening pattern here. I don't know if there was first sort of high or low in there, but yeah, just not bad volume here so far. You just just definitely want to sort of keep an eye on that sort of good um the potential to sort of maybe start a new trend there. Um Setai was on the list there. Definitely watching this one too. So I was, I was just reading about, you know, luxury brands and stuff there, just you know. Uh, Everyone wants a Gucci bag, and everyone, you know, so everyone, yes, you know, it's, it's just it's the whole social media platform. Everyone, no one's got money, but everyone wants to look like they've got money. So mm. that's that's the reality of of the of luxury brands. That's a, um, it's the you know the the, the current sort of um, youth and ge generations coming through as they you know yeah they they want to basically you know, everyone wants to sort of wear and look luxury so um yeah what a fascinating cycling around sydney the amount of bus stops and buses that have dior or an expensive brands all over them in yeah. all parts of sydney which is quite amazing and regardless of the suburb amazing i think with um satire here i mean this this is a good the good lesson for me with satire is that um look there's a lot of growth stocks that do go through this big correction there so that's that's a fairly that's like overbalance the trend that's a bit of, bit of a negative for me, but um, but then it has sort of started to build here, and then breaking up there. So you're probably looking for some sort of A, B, C, like a little bit of a B wave break here before you start to look at it again, because the volume is pretty light to start with here. So really, this is the first day, you know, breaking that B wave there, and actually the first day up here. So we can look at these, but only, if, for my opinion. We're only allowed to look at these sort of stocks that have this overbalance if they've maintained the weekly trend. So, if that pullback is that pullback is just sat on top of the previous high there, so that leaves it in a strong position still to go to a new high. If, if, but if that's sort of broken back below um, previous sort of highs and stuff there, it doesn't make it as strong there. So, this is sort of one that I sort of thought, while well, okay, that weekly chart there is sort of. All that that's just come back and sat on. It's actually left a bit of gap here between the previous high and it's just sat on top of the previous high. So it still leaves it in a pretty strong position. Like if you understand trend structure, the trend is still pretty robust there. And the thing about the last leg up, if this is like a big fourth wave, and this is like fifth wave, so if you've ever studied Elliott waves, the fifth wave can go up in lighter volume. So if you're going to study BHP and Rio and like those sort of stocks there, or the skew, they have that last big wave up. I think no, I was trying to remember the year before the last decline. There was that the last leg up was on much lighter volumes, 
So, but you know, that's the, you know, that's the classic sort of fifth wave style. So you still go up here, but you just, you just understand that this is typically a sort of last, you know, like a fifth week, fifth leg up here or a wave five. So, um, you know, we're not sort of seeing the big impulsive volume that maybe we saw this move here. So, but still pretty positive here. So, you know, satire looks, you know, it looks like it's going to get on your item wing, Chris, as well. So this we want to keep an eye on here. Maybe, maybe we'll get another little, you know, we get the little David Ryan set up here. Maybe we get five or six days, little tight congestion, um, some sort of consolidation on the high, but yeah, we keep it on our radar. We keep an eye on it. See if we, um, see if we don't get the right setup here. Something like this, we get a little, you know, nice little high and tight price action like that, where it sort of it hits a bit of a high, you know, sideways, then your volume dries up, and then then you pop through again. That's that's what we want to see for set high. So, um, yes, um, NEU uh, was sort of one that we we spoke about there. There's that game changer trade there. Well, Chris basically gapped up there. Some um, excellent news for. Um, you run pharmaceuticals, and uh, I did. That was actually that was one actually that I did buy. Basically, pullback intraday, but we learned from the past that it, that's exactly what it did last time. It gapped up, game changing news, and it continued to move higher. This one's moved higher. I, I took my profits a little early here. Um, I was pretty. I was itching once I sort of got up to this high here. I was, I was keen to sort of get out here, but those are the type of things we sort of try to look for as well. Okay, that's the uh, that's the quarterly there. So looking at the weekly list there, so actually a few gold names on the list there, Chris. Um, ECB was actually coal name. I know it's a few of the coal stocks popping up there, but didn't see much volume from those. So I think BCB, I think Whitehaven might have been on the list there. Pretty light volume there. Nothing, nothing earth shattering jumping, jumping out at me in some of those here. So. That's a bit of a dull bounce here for you hope. So just not really showing too much there. So not really catching my eye personally. COG's had a bit of a bounce there. Probably four or five days of chunky volume. So probably one just to keep an eye on for some sort of pullback. Um, the Grey Mining's had a nice little bounce there. So this is interesting for a few reasons though. So we get a nice washout low here. Bit of a bounce back in the range. Come back made a first time though. Now we're sort of pushing through here. So so now we're sort of making a new high here. So this is interesting here just because we've sort of probably, you know, broke a little B wave back above the 50, just starting to build here. So interesting sort of setup here. Um, yeah, this might just be a three-way pullback and then build from here. So, um, yeah, just some early interesting signs there for DeGray. And I think BGL... Well, number nine as well. Another. Oh, third right. There's another one there, Chris. That's that's pretty good volume as well off, off that there. So, and this has stayed fairly, you know, it's not too far off the highs here. So showing a bit of relative strength, uh, BGL. Um, that's Bellevue Gold. So, you know, this is a decent move here. This is a little tight, you know, a little bit of a descending wedge in there and then broken up here. And then once we go through a little B wave, but oh, yeah, we've had a first bounce here, pull back. So look at that, you know, look at that selling in there. Excellent. Yeah, two days. Oh. Yeah, very, very light there. So it popped up here and sold back here on no selling. And then first week up, bang, we're basically, you know, we go from what, 2 million to 8 million. Yeah. So that just shows you that that's sort of, you know, four times the um, volume there on the first day back up again. So that's got some dust over there. So been pretty robust here so far. So interesting that Golds was actually showing something something again. Sort of had that big pop there previously, had a good run there. Some of them are sort of consolidated there. Some of them held pretty well. I've, I've had a bit of a mixed bag there, I think. Um, my Evolution's done pretty well. Vermeerly's did pretty well. RSG's just sort of hung on there. I think the C and M's was the one that did fade back, but that's again, it's now starting to build again. So, um, yeah, so interesting sector. Uh, I think KCM was on the list, a sort of small name, probably not as impressive as some of the others, but is breaking out of a pretty strong downtrend there. This is probably one of the, yeah, probably less, 
you know, probably laggards of the industry, but actually starting to break up here as well. So that is interesting here that just quite a few golds um, have popped up on the list there. Um, double R. Well, this almost pretty interesting, Chris. Um, thought it might be a little um, potential sort of cup and handle sort of uh, setting up here, but I think this one's under takeover here, so it's a sort of script at cash bid there, so it's going to make it hard to trade there. So I think around fifty four cents to sort of um, will be the script and cash sort of mix it depending on the, on the other trade there. So it probably just takes out of the equation there, but um, one just to keep an eye on. DLG closed the loop. This is a recycling company there. Look, had a bit of good news the other day there, but it hasn't sort of followed on here. Nothing sort of technically there to write about there. Um, yeah, I, I, probably, I probably, I'm still sort of uncertain about that one actually. We leave it alone. Webjet's pretty big volume there the last few days. Big, big jump, big volume there. That's actually pretty, it's a pretty good sign actually for them. So I think, um, a positive update here recently, pretty pretty strong. You know, that's that now the whole sort of when when you see that um, down downward testing and then reverse back here. So what I you know putting a basketball underwater and then the whole thing pops back up again. That's sort of that that sort of type of look there and big big buying as well. So it's really sort of that that sort of sell off there was bought up with gusto. Big big buy in there. So um, that's a pretty good sign there. So that normally that infers you're probably going to go higher there. So that still looks pretty robust. Another one that we mentioned the last couple of weeks actually was Q, sorry GQG, just because it had sort of broken out of that fifty bit of volume there has has pulled back a bit of a choppy stock here, definitely up and down, up and down here. But um, yeah, want to keep an eye on there just because I think that last move was. Um, was interesting there. Um, I noticed CCX had a bit of a push there, um, just broken the 50, but still think there's too much overhead there. So um, I'd, um, you know, I think, I think that one's a bit tricky. There's one here that I thought um, might have been AMA. This one was on the list at number 20 on our body of mention there, but I, I've basically sort of suggested not to, you know, we can see here the whole thing sort of run up there and then we saw the volume spike at the top there. We're selling a little bit of, you know, a little bit of selling there, a bit of a rally of own volume again and then the hard selling again. So just going to be wary of these lighter volume rallies and then when you see that sort of bigger, you know, when you see that big sort of volume spike after it's had a bit of a run, that should always be a bit of a warning as well. So that's what you don't want to see. You really want to see the big chunky volume. Like you want to see like three or four days back to back volume, which should propel it forward there. You don't want to sort of see a light volume rally here yeah, and then volume start to, you know, build as you get higher up. So that can sort of stop a trend in its tracks here. So just something to keep an eye on there. And um, that's about it really, I think. Um, too much else. Um, I think CXL was sort of one that I was sort of keeping an eye on there just because of some reasonable volume off the lows. I saw Bodan break through the top here, CDA. That's still here, just, you know, struggling to go down this one here. Feels a bit late here, but not showing any weakness there. Um, and I thought, um, thought well, this one looked interesting too. Actually, I think I mentioned that earlier, Chris, there. Just got a first high low set up in here. Breaking up of the range of broken above the 50, little sort of high tight, you know, little flag pennant in here. And then a bit of a break here yesterday on volume there. So, um, you know, it's sort of MP, MP, um, L and been pretty robust there. It's been pretty, you know, look how strong that stock's been here. So, pr pretty strong sector. That, that no one's giving away their health insurance. Um, so, pretty robust sort of sector here. So, that both worlds for NHS there, I think, so as well. But yeah, pretty pretty choppy out there. And um, I think I mentioned CKF. That was sort of one that I did like here off the nine dollar level. Again, yeah, that's sort of you know, I was just talking to Chris about this. Is that you know, looking at our weekly structures as well. So when we see like an impulsive move up 
and then a corrective pullback, and it comes back and sits on top of the old high. That's what we want to see. That's that's really, you know, in terms of what Bill McLaren used to sort of teach there, sitting on, you know, you can see this on the daily chart, but when you see it on the weekly, um, it's probably more important there because that can sort of give you a drop. That, that's usually when you sort of go to new highs here. So saw something like this recently there with uh, with Downers as well, DOW. So we've sort of rallied here, had an exhaustive sort of type low down here, big volume, so exhausted, had a bit of a bounce, pulled back, impulsive rally against. This has gone up pretty quickly. Now this has pulled back here 16 weeks, basically, and a bit of a flag pennant there. If you look where that come back, it's come back and sat on top of that previous high. First little high there as well. So that's that's a good sign there. So now we're looking, we're drilling into a daily there. For evidence of you know what we want to sort of see there is a little um you know so we bounced up here gone sideways for a few days and then maybe breaking a b wave so even just waiting for that little that little uh, b wave break there so anyone who sort of study sort of stan weinstein there um you're looking for sort of you know, at least sort of a um a, a break above the previous sort of highs up there as well and maybe a bit of sea leg as well but that's why sometimes looking at your time frame is important there. I think if those sort of, if you see on the weekly setup, price action, put it back sitting on an old high, that's that's really, that's really encouraging there. It should give you a bit more confidence there. And what is a pretty tricky environment here at the moment. So I'm finding a lot of those weekly setups, Chris, when they come back and sit on top of the highs, that they're the ones that are really sort of working and pushing through. Um, Daily is probably pretty messy out there for a lot of stocks as well. That's a really good insight, especially to pull back the way and stable bit the weekly as you've got that five years of weekly. Because if there's a similar setup, it's a lot more potent on the weekly just because so much more data and compression and price actually has been consolidated into that setup. So that's a really helpful one. And then also earlier when you went into the 30 minutes, that's really useful, especially as you were saying with the less liquid companies. Okay, how do we trade this? Because those especially in smaller companies, those bars can cover a really wide range. So you drill down on those 30 minutes to help you finesse your entry once you've got a, once you're happy with the larger picture, is that what you do with the 30 minute? Yeah, I know it's like I've heard some of the other traders that, you know, um, talk about five minute and 10 and, um, you know, so yeah, but for me personally, I sort of don't want to sort of, I'm more sort of trailing, I'm, I'm trading sort of daily setups. Or I look at the weeklies as well. Um, but I don't really want to drill too much more further down than the 30 minute there. Cause you, you can see too much, you're like a, a one minute, two minute, five minute, 10 minute, you, you can start to see all sorts of setups there. You know, um, it's really sort of like the weekly time frame is pretty important for me. That sort of gives you the confidence there. Cause that, that if you sort of, if you see something like that sitting on top of the previous high, think, okay, well, this, this should rally here to a new high here. That's sort of, that's McLaren sort of structure there. So maybe this can go back up to the previous, you know, it's up around the 490 zone there. So, you know, if you're buying this down at, you know, 380 up to a 490 at the dollar 10 there, then let's say if you can get, say, set here for 10 or 11 cents, that's 10 for one risk reward. It's a great risk reward sort of setup here. So, or, or maybe you can give yourself 20 cents sort of um, room um, and get a five for one risk reward. It's still pretty good. Um, but yeah, so you might start with a 10 and then as it starts moving up, sort of build with it. Um, but yeah, those are the sort of type of things just sort of look at there. And, and look, the, just those trickier stocks, those stocks that are probably a little bit less liquid, um, you know, we've got to manage the risk. It's just, you know, you've got to be around to find another day. So, um, you yeah, know, and, th and this, this, the, this, the last three months has been probably the trickiest period, um, probably the last three years. So, um, it's about not losing too much money when it's when it's choppy like this. When the market opens up again, um, you know, making hay while the sun shines there. So you got to sort of capture those big moves. You got to sort of stick with it as well. So you know, if you get a five for one or a ten for one risk reward you know, return there, it's just just paid for the next ten stop. You know, <laughs> the next ten sort of the losses that you, you get there. So don't think about the money. Just think about the ratio um, as well. So that's I think that's really important. Well, that is a good one as well. Don't think about the money, think about the ratios, setups, thinking with the rules. So uh, they're really useful insights for us to take into the weekend. 
And uh, that will say thank you very much, Gary Clover from Nova's Capital. Thanks, Chris.